We all have many hunting stories. Some are good, some are sad, some are funny, and a very few are special. This, this is one of those. Bowhunting mountain game requires a lot of drive. Mountains are unforgiving, and if you combine that with the hardest animal by far to hunt in Spain, the challenge is assured. We all set our own goals, and since I hunted stags for the first time, I dream about the day I will be able to shoot a stag with my bow. But not anywhere, it needed to be in my favorite playground, the Cantabrian mountains. No, you're no, stupid. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the support. <laughs> to understand this story, it is very important to add some context. The previous year we went to these exact mountains where we hunted for 10 straight days for stacks. A lot of elevation gain, rain, wind, and effort was put by the whole crew. We documented the whole adventure for an episode of Stack Culture. After a few close calls and a missed opportunity, I came back home empty-handed, but empowered knowing that we gave it all. The, that last year they forbid the hunting of wolves and the wolf population has increased a lot and the animals that are suffering a lot is all the cattle and you will see here uh, the cattle being taken care of by a, a breed, a mastin, which is a very big dog to try to protect them from wolves but one of the main problems here is that in this type of terrain, all the cattle is super scattered all around, so you cannot have enough dogs to take care and protect the, the cattle. So, I don't know, it's just, I think it doesn't make sense to forbid wolf hunting. The populations are going high. It could be sustainable hunting of wolves as any other animal, but it's an animal that it's beautiful and, I don't know, has been protected and hope. Our government makes a change because it doesn't make any fucking sense.
When you commit to hunt with a bow, there are many things you cannot control. The wind drifting, the weather, the terrain, the animal position, or even if you make everything perfect, will the animal move when you shoot? There is only one thing that we can control, and that, that is your attitude and therefore you are willing to take to achieve your goals. Super, super cold morning today. We have spotted two hinds and two spikes and a nice roebuck, but it's very windy and the wind is not good for the for the roar animals quiet down and It is really surprising how much terrain the stacks cover because we have located the same. It's incredible. They walk from one side to the other of the mountains. We, we have been locating the same stacks so we know which ones they are. And they work some days, I mean, on one afternoon they can walk six kilometers, I don't know, four or five or whatever, no problem, cross valleys. And in seconds, what it takes you hours or days. <laughs> different valley this afternoon hiking up weather is way nicer we can hear several stacks already roaring so the afternoon looks very promising with a shorter hunting window this year I decided to go back for revenge and prove myself that I could tip the balance to my side This year I was better prepared, as every failure makes you stronger, persistence is a virtue, and hard work beats talent every single time. to the car but fun day.
been trying to get inside the bow range of a couple of stacks that were roaring inside that forest. They went quiet. We just got off away from the forest and they are roaring again. And what that means is that the stacks were either smelling us or feeling that we were there. And that's why we they were they went quiet. So a lot of times we think that the animals just went quiet because of the time of the day. But when they feel that we are around, they will just shut their mouths and be quiet. Which is a very smart thing to do. Probably more people should do that. Okay. When hunting stacks, one of the most important things is not to locate where they are currently roaring, but to try to understand their patterns. Where are they going to be in half an hour? Where are they planning to bed down? What are the hinds doing? What are they going to do? In order to predict what's going to be their next move, in hopes to ambush them instead of chasing them all around. I have to admit that one of the things I like the most about hunting bread stacks is to be able to interact with them. Feeling that you are part of nature, that you are another stack talking to them. Challenging them, looking for hinds. To somehow get under their skin, to feel even a deeper connection trying to understand the world better. stacks and deer they don't come just to the wallows to refresh them themselves but also they use them a lot to mark territory get their smell for when other stacks come they know they are around so it's a good spot to sit down but there's some fresh tracks but the water is very clear so it seems it seems that they haven't come tonight Actually, I will have to recognize that calling and interacting with the stacks might not be the most effective way to hunt them. Most of the times, animals can tell the difference and know that we are humans. For this reason, and considering calling a stack into bow range is very difficult, probably the wisest advice will be to remain silent. But since I'm here to have fun, I do what I enjoy even if it's not the most effective thing to do. no more we could hear every step he was I thought he was gonna come but they oh, typically often they will get into 60 70 meters but those 50 last meters oh, they stay they f there forever so we're gonna head down my dad is already nervous because we are a bit late so let's move quick Exactly back at the same area that we were hunting for ten year for ten days. It seems like ten years, but ten days last year. So we're gonna make a difference today. Solo. 
Sorry guys for the video, but we need to try to get a stack and it's just, we need to move really fast, so it's gonna be hard to film it, but I'll try it my best. And Fernando is gonna film from, from the, he's gonna film from this side, so we'll see. We circle around to try and get above where we have last seen the stag, and with a good win on my face, I slowly creep in to try to relocate him. The stag and his hinds must be inside that thick patch of bushes underneath us. At less than 100 meters, I wait until I finally am able to relocate him. I can only see the tip of the antlers, but that's enough to know he's still there. I slowly shorten the distance. I don't want to make any mistakes, we have the whole day ahead of us. The bushes here are really, really high, and I can barely see the stack except when he moves around. Considering the location and the time of the day, he's most likely looking to bed down for the day. The stack finally beds down. At 65 meters, I can only see the tip of his antlers, but there isn't a possible shot from here. Considering the strong winds too, I need to get closer. I don't want to risk a shot on these conditions. So I had the stack at 65, bedded down. It stood up, but never had a shooting window. And now I cannot see it because it's in the thick bushes. I'm freezing. I'm shaking, shivering. Hope he moves. If we can relocate him, he must be 50 meters, 40 from me. But I cannot see too thick. He bent down probably to be protected from the wind. I get a little bit closer, but during the crawling, the stack rebets on a different spot. And I cannot see it anymore. I know, though, that he's still inside that patch of thick bushes. I just need to wait for him to make a next move. The hours pass by, and a hundred of things come to my mind. Should I throw a rock? Should I get closer? Should I roar? But something inside me knows that staying still is the right thing to do. After more than 10 hours waiting on that position, 
and finally get a glimpse of one of the crowns of the stack antlers. He had changed the betting position again, and now maybe. Pedro, Pedro se está moviendo. Pedro se está moviendo, ¿vale? Maybe I could find a shooting window. Claro, claro, claro. Si no le he visto, le. Venga, vale, venga. No. Ahora, ahora abierto. Muerto! Ha tirado, lo ha matado. Ole, ole, ole. Está ah, que está como un tono, está de que va, este, este ahora mismo moviéndolo para que caiga ya. Muerto, 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 Pedro, muerto, muerto al venado, eh, va muerto, eh. Ahí va la madre que me parió. Cayó, cayó, cayó. Nine freaking hours, or ten, I don't know what time is it, ten. Second season, third season without being able to harvest that stack. Free range tomorrow was the last day, so I told Fernando, hey, I'm gonna go by myself. I, above filming and videoing and everything, I honestly want to harvest the stack here. Last season we put 10 days, the previous season even more, I don't know. And finally, we have been sitting on this stack for 10 hours. 10 hours sitting here between rocks, crawling. He was bedded in this thick. And finally, uh, I saw him bedded down. I sneak into it. He was running out of light, so it was a 47 yard shot, bedded down, high quartering away shot. But I was like, fuck, I trained for to this. So I, I'm, I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna put the arrow. So as soon as he, I just drew back took my time, settled, squeezed the trigger, great shot, and Samuel just saw it going down. So I have been all these 10 hours, there's no reception or anything, so I have been just deep in my thoughts about how much we like doing this, if it's worth all the effort, all the struggle, but when it connects, it's amazing. And I just can't think enough Fernando for being here and Samuel. Samuel and Fernando, they have been here every freaking day and I wish Lewis was here because he was last year every single day under the rain hiking up and down and to be able to make it happen with a beautiful stack, I don't know. I'm super, super proud of this one. Thanks guys. Here is where the stack has been all day in this thick, so it's really hard, he would move around and finally I got to see him in this little opening, better down high crawl behind this rock. It was 50, no, 43 meters, so 47 yards, right in that pocket, better down. I was so scared we're running already off light, so I decided to take the shot and run there. And, and according to Samuel, it look, I mean, I hit him. It's really hard to know where to shoot a better animal, but I hit him right 
what I wanted. So, but into Samuel, it only ran 30 meters. I mean, like 50 meters roll down. So, as soon as I saw it, I hear him screaming. I was like, shh, fuck, you don't ever scream when you shoot an animal. But he was really far away and he was seeing already the stack rolling. So, oh, what an experience. I'm trying to see the The stack has rolled over here. ¿Cómo de acojonante ha sido? ¡Vamos! ¡Vamos! Somewhere I can believe this is real. If you guys have watched the previous episode of the stack culture, you will try to have a glimpse of how much we have worked for this stack. So. The stack was better, but we were running out of light 43 meters. Uh, it's a distance that I have a lot of confidence and I spend a lot of time watching with the binoculars to pick a tiny spot because it's, I didn't want to go too much forward and hit just the shoulder. When an animal is bedded, it's very risky how to shoot it and you really need to figure out where the lungs are. And the arrow hit exactly where I was uh, aiming on the hip and goes all the way in inside the inside the lungs so pulling it out you see so the arrow ended in in the lungs I'm not sure if hard or not but all the way inside here and that's why it only ran 40 meters ha oh, perfect thank you eh? I would like to say that most of the people will never know how much time we have spent in this mountain. It is crazy, it is crazy. We have worked, Pedro has been the whole day there waiting for the stack, more than 10 hours without eating, drinking. People, is, people don't, don't see that on the videos, but I would like to say that it is just an unreal job. So, congratulations. de jabalito, butardo de smoking. ¡Yapa! ¡Ole! ¡Aupa, pedrete! ¡Ole nuestros huevos, señores! Now that we finally had accomplished our goal, something inside me is kind of sad. Probably it is because it's the journey, the thing that we enjoy the most, way more than the destination itself. As we slowly butcher the stack properly and pack all the meat out, I can feel that I'm closing a chapter in my life and that nothing else sparks my emotions like a real and an authentic hunt with good friends. The Cantabrian mountains are a special place and can't wait to come back to test myself again on a new and greater challenge. That's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoy the, the video, the story. Wish I had a kill shot to share, but some things are meant to be that way, I guess. And I guess that a bunch of you guys appreciate all the effort I mean, if you are already still watching this video, you guys really appreciate all the effort that takes to harvest an animal here on the mountains and fairy chase and all that. So, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, thanks for subscribing to this channel and hope to be able to share more of these adventures in the near future. It has been pretty, pretty long story 
to get this stack. So super, super proud. One of the hardest animals. One of the animals that I have put more time into. So really proud of this one. Yeah. Okay, guys. See you in the next one. Thanks for everything. And this is the aero entering. This is the diaphragm. This is the muscle that helps you expand and contract your lungs. So it goes inside here, the lungs, and now we're gonna rip it open and see what else, how far in it went. Yeah, the arrow went all the way through the lungs and hit the heart entrance and exit. So even if you see the arrow sometimes sticking out, sometimes when they run it comes out a little bit, but the penetration was amazing across the whole body and that's why it died in, in seconds. So super proud of the shot. That's good.